Praise the Lord, everyone. Why don't we stand right now and give the Lord a hand clap of praise right now. Come on, are you excited to be in the house of the Lord? Looking forward to what God's going to do in this place today in this first service. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we love you. We thank you, Lord, that we can be in your house and be with your people. We ask you to anoint Sister Mills as she sings. God, anoint the man of God today as he speaks. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It won't be long, soon and very soon. I believe we're going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Exodus 33 and 7. Hallelujah. I'll be, I know what our young minister's been doing the first service. I'm going to do it today because Brother Sage, really Lord willing, will be doing the second. But Exodus 33 and 7. And Moses took the tabernacle and he pitched it without the camp. Without the camp, that's key there, afar off from the camp. And he called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that everyone which sought the Lord went out into the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. And it came to pass that when Moses went out into the tabernacle, that all the people rose up, stood every man at his tent door, looked after Moses until he was gone unto the tabernacle. And it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended, stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. Hallelujah. I want, 
I want you to lay your Bibles down. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Sage, would you bless the word of the Lord? Amen. You can be seated. I want to talk to us about the Tristan place. The Tristan place. To kind of paint a setting for you, it's dark, thank you, in the desert, but soon the morning will come. No one steers in the tabernacle. The fire of the morning sacrifice are yet to burn. The pillar of God's glory has not transformed yet from a fire to a cloud. Israel's camp is quiet. From any height at all, one can see it's uh, see that the how quiet how the the changing of the time is before it begins to change from dark to day. The tabernacle is the very hub, and and from it projects, if you could paint it, four large spokes. Three tribes are camped to the north. Three tribes each camped to the other three points of the compass, the south and the west and the, and the east. No haphazard multitude in this. All of it is arranged in a perfect shape of a cross. Beyond the outer limits of the camp, it can be seen if one searched and sought with care. It is a small tent a meeting. It is a place to get along with God. I, I want to read to you an excerpt here from the word of the Lord. It said in of Exodus 13 and 7, it called it the tabernacle of the congregation. This is not the same tabernacle that you went into the gates and into the courts and you went to the brazen altar and the labor of water and you went into the holy place and the holies of holies. Okay? This is, hallelujah, this is the tabernacle of the congregation is what they call it in the King James Version. In the NIV, it is called the tent of meeting. In the living Bible, it is called the tent for meeting with God. They called it. But a description of this tent in Moffat's translation arrests my attention yesterday. Moffat uses a word that sounds almost foreign to our ears. He called this tent to meet with God. It said Moses used to pitch the tent outside the camp at some distance from it. He called it the Tristan tent. Anyone who consulted the eternal used to go outside to the Tristan tent, outside the camp. Allow me to explore this place today with you. If you look at the word in short, Tris, the word sounds like it belongs in some Victorian era novel. Few would know its definition. In fact, in studying, I had to look it up myself. And those who do associate it with a rendezvous and inappropriate. The word is wrapped in the tones of a simpler time and place. But it is not, however, an innocent word. It carries with it the impression of secrecy and romance. Unrelented, requited, excuse me, desires and longings. The definition here for it is an agreement as between lovers to meet at a certain play, time and place. A meeting or meeting place that has been agreed on. Think of it. This tent was a place where two lovers, God and man, could meet together at an appropriate time. Think of it long enough and it will change how you view your alone time with God. 
Communion with God is more than just obligation. It is a time alone with the one who loves us very, very much. I'm telling you that a prayer closet is a Christian place when it comes to, to spending time alone with God. Such as a place was needed more in the 33rd chapter of Exodus than in any other place in the Bible. We find ourselves standing, if I can paint a picture for you, in the rubble of God's inscribed tablets of stone. Moses, meek, mild Moses, is now angry, frustrated Moses. Aaron is hiding. The people are ashamed, and God is being stubborn. While Moses has been on the mountain breathing the, the, the atmosphere of God's majesty, Aaron has fashioned a golden calf for Israel's sport. Moses descended with the law of God in his hands. and I can see him as he got it in his trembling hands only to see a once delivered people, the very people that God delivered out of Egypt that had been sustained daily by the hand of God. Manna on the ground when they got up every morning. Water from a rock when they were spoken to. Breaking as Moses stood there. He begins to break those commandments that's in his hand by throwing those tablets up on the ground. Stone hit stone. And the pieces of broken commandments flew throughout the air. In the chapter previous to our text. God told Moses to leave him alone so that his wrath could burn against Israel. God had promised to destroy Israel, to offer to start a brand new people again with Moses, to be fashioned into a brand new nation. But Moses began to do what any shepherd would do. He stood in the gap. And the longest pause in Scripture can be found when Moses said, Hallelujah, in Exodus 32 and 32, Please forgive their sin. But if not, God, then blot me out of the book that you have written. God agreed to not destroy Israel. But he also refused to go with them to the promised land. And instead he struck the nation with a plague. The chapter opens with sorrow and sign. God had told his people to get moving. He will not go with them lest he decides to destroy them. The people did not did, did what they should have done long before. They fell on their face and they began to repent. God told Moses to tell the people, if you really repent it, remove your ornaments. Prostate before the holy mount. And the people stripped themselves of all their jewelry. And they left it there in the dust. What had been given up for a false god was now given to the true God. Egypt's plundered jewelry had meant to be a blessing, but now it had become a curse. A golden calf was ground to powder. And gold, silver, and precious stones spilled on the ground. In this time of sickness and sorrow, Moses does something unusual. For the gardener, he sets up a tent. It does not appear to be the tabernacle, but it's something else. The tabernacle was the focus of Israel's encampment. There, the sacrifice was offered. Their sins were dealt with. The priests offered up incense and performed their official duties. Everyone who went there brought a sacrifice. But this other tent, it was different. It was set up just outside the camp. It was not just reserved for the priests alone, but it was for anyone, the Bible said, that were inquiring of the Lord. In a day of judgment, Moses set up a trysting place. In judgment, 
There is mercy. I'm here to tell you today that I am guilty, me personally, of a love-hate relationship with religion. So, Brother Mills, what are you talking about? At times, I love it. I love what like-minded people and organizations can accomplish. When I read of the great crusades and organized effort, I am confident by what religion can do. Yet at times, I hate religion. For we humans have a bad habit of programs over the work of the Spirit of God. We organize God out of our lives. We schedule, uh, we have protocols, we have rituals uh, that are formulated that prohibit God from moving, and we want to keep God in a box. Hallelujah. And when the spirit is not flowing uh, and the sap of spiritual life cannot infuse his people, uh, we wonder what is wrong. And like the church at Sardis in the book of Revelations, we sometimes boast of a living relationship with God, but we are dead within. Yet there are times that I love religion. I will recognize that people can worship God anywhere, but I'm a churchaholic. I love the church house. Posted about Thursday night about the prayer gathering, uh, impromptu, you know, just getting together, unscheduled prayer meeting that we had here Thursday night and then another one last night. And, and I posted about it, and, and, and Sister Glenda shared it, and somebody commented on there and said, said uh, the house of God, the house of God ain't no church building. Well, I could, so, you know, she called me, you know, she's ready to go bite somebody's head off. And I said, just delete it. Don't cast your pearls before the swine. But, uh, but the next day I was in here praying on that Friday, and Brother Sagely, the Holy Ghost, spoke to me as I was walking these aisles. He said, don't tell me that this ain't the house of God. Because the writer said in the book of Psalms, I was glad when they said unto me, let me go unto the house of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'm a churchaholic. I love the church house. I love seeing parking lots filled with cars of worshipers. God must smile when he sees the people of his name worship and sacrifice together. The Bible said, forsaken not the assembling of your, to have an assembly, you gotta have a crowd. You gotta have more than one person, the assembling of yourself together. And at these times, I love what is visible. Religion means to all of us. Oh, but the dark side comes back. I hate religion when it appears that we're just going through the motions. We sing, I give you my all. I give you my all, God. I give you my all. But our mouths speak words far from the truth in our hearts. Our profession appeases our conscience and thus pacifies us and we go deaf to the needs of people that are around us. God refuses to be worshipped in half-hearted fashion. He waves goodbye to those who believe they can cool the warmth of his presence to a mild, tepid temperature. There's a word that was coined to describe the pagan deities. The word is apathetic. It came to describe the Greek God who did not care for humanity. Some religions have an apathetic God. Some religions have apathetic worshipers. Some scientists serve an opposite deity. He winds up the world and he just lets it unwind in his own sweet time. But I'm here to tell you that I serve, and I believe you serve, a present God. One who is a very present help in the time of need. He meets with us. He sets up a place. He sets up a time to make it happen. This is the root of my problem with religion. God is not interested in our measured worship. He desires intimacy. Paul said that I may know him <laughs> more than head knowledge, but a heartfelt relationship with God. God wants to meet with me in that place 
of intimacy more than I even want to be there. There was a Oswald Chambers said had this statement. He said, "Is it a joy to Jesus when a person takes time to walk more intimately with Him? The bearing of fruit is always shown in Scripture to be a visible result of an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ." So outside of the camp, off the beaten path, God will meet with us. Sometimes it may be a bit of a hike, but who minds the sacrifice for love's sake? Stop this moment, and I want you to think about your own walk with God. If your path has grown dull, if it's grown slow, and you find yourself falling out by the way, perhaps it has been a long time since you have been to the Tristan place. One moment with him, one kiss from heaven, one brief moment when his face smiles on us and the sacrifice just disappears. It's not sacrifice, it's love. Religion can only take you so far, but intimacy will take you the rest of the way if you'll come to the Christian place. I have never been so burdened in my life, in the last week and a half, especially the last week, as I watched what I have seen going on and sweeping across this country. You may say it ain't nothing real to it, Brother Mills, it ain't. Well, listen, I'd rather them be, be talking about that than them be talking about the satanic junk that's going on in the Grammys. I'd rather them be talking about that going on at a campus than talking about shooting up somebody and things going on and the perverted things that they're teaching in our campuses. But they don't have the fullness of the truth. They didn't have it on the Sousa Street either. Study it out. When they were getting the Holy Ghost on the Sousa Street, they were Trinitarians and baptizing in Trinity. But the Holy Ghost will lead and guide into all truth. And who am I to call what God calls clean, call it unclean? If it ain't of God, it'll come to naught. But if it is God, I say God, reveal in this last time. Because in the last days, say of God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. Never been steered. We're having if you didn't come, I, I, I'm not beating you up for this, okay? But I woke up Wednesday. Man, I'm fixing to blow a message. But I just feel to say it a little bit. I woke up, I think it was Thursday actually. And my heart was burning within me what I'm seeing going on. And now it's, it went to five, five different universities. And you say, people really getting the Holy Ghost? Yes, I've got confirmed boots on the ground of preachers that I know that are there. One God apostolic preacher of uh, people really getting the Holy Ghost. Miracles happening. Hallelujah. In fact, one of the greatest evangelists in the United Pentecostal Church, Brother Taylor Fish, is supposed to be there tomorrow baptizing people in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You said, where, I'm, I'm getting off my notes now, but I, I know obey the Holy Ghost. Uh, you said, where did it all start at, Brother Mills? Uh, I, uh, uh, where, where was the genesis at? Well, because I, 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 I begin to watch things uh, as it begin to happen. And, uh, and I said, you know, that, that's what I want to know. Uh, that, that's what I want to know because I want more of it here. See, I done dealt with some of the critics on some of the preacher forums that I'm on, and I've heard them say, it ain't nothing true it. It ain't nothing but a bunch of hype. We have that in our services every single weekend. And I said Hogwarts. We don't have it in here every single weekend. If we did well, we'd be building buildings that we own and own and own and own. If it did, we wouldn't have to worry about people being faithful to church. But some people can't make it ever. They can't make it Two services in a row. So don't tell me we have that same hunger. 
And the Lord began to deal with Chad Mills. Let me just preach to me for a little bit, Sister Ryan. He began to deal with me. And the Lord began to, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. And he began to tell me, this is what the problem is. The apostolic movement feels like they got God on demand. We can walk in here at a certain time and we can flip a light switch and we can have the glory fall down and my God, by 8.30, 9 o'clock on Wednesday night, by, by 4.30 on, if God ain't done, I, I'm done, I'm checking out, I'm going to the restaurant. And my wife spoke up and she said, and we have forgot how to linger in his presence. I'm just gonna tell you, you may not grow up this way, but let me just tell you how I grew up. I grew up on midnight prayer meetings. I grew up I had early morning breaking of the dawn prayer meetings. I grew up, we've had it to happen two times in the, in, since I've been pastoring here, not near enough, where the life and spirit got a hold of people. And you just had to basically carry them out to the vehicle. You know why they don't happen all the time? Because you gotta linger for a while for that to happen. You can't be watching the clock for that to happen. You can't be wondering how much longer we're doing. It's just feeling after God. It's just seeking his face. It's saying, God, I want more. But we as apostolics, let me preach to this church. We walk in and the manna is on the ground for us. The manna's all there. We don't have to hardly even pray it down. We come and we sear our conscience feeling like we're okay. I'm here to tell you, when you're full, you're picky about what you're being fed but when you're hungry when you're hungry you should just give me the crumbs that fall from the master table just give me the crumbs God my phone Sister Megan is the administrator on the Facebook page with me for the church Facebook page. She can tell you, it's literally blowing up. I have had people text me today that are driving all the way for this prayer gathering that we're going to have on Thursday night. The nominal people from Freeport to come to this church because they are stirred up. And I hope our own saints show up. Are we hungry? How long has it been since you've been to the Tristan place? It's just you and God. I'm telling you right now. Huh? Be called by Sunday. I watched it happen Monday as we met in this place, those that came. And Brother Sage with the Holy Ghost filled this place as we prayed and we talked to God. I watched it on Tuesday as we were at the Bible study. And I was standing there. I was making teas, if you want to call it that. My brother Nation was getting ready to teach. My wife was fixing the same. We had 20 of us, or excuse me, 16 of us there. And I said, God, I want to feel what they're feeling on them campuses right now. I want my hunger to go forth. And I'm telling you the Holy Ghost, y'all seen, some of y'all seen a three to four minute video. It was way longer than that. I'm telling you the Holy Ghost, there were people walking around speaking in tongues. I, I'm here to tell you, there were people, for the nation said, I didn't know if I was gonna get to teach. I didn't care. I, I'm telling you, his glory. He said, if any man will hunger and thirst after righteousness, he shall be filled. Well, man, people getting the Holy Ghost, they ain't got it all together. Yeah, some of y'all have had it for 25 years. Y'all ain't got it together yet either. Hallelujah. I'm glad he's still working on me. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost will lead and guide, not drive. Wednesday night, we come in here and God begin to do a work on every one of us. I know it was a marriage uh, series, but God was working on every one of us about how important it is. If we expect him to forgive us, we got to forgive each other. Thursday night I felt led to have I just put a deal out there on the Facebook uh, private group and I said going to church to pray no pressure for anybody and there was there was at, uh, 18 excuse me 16 people that showed up in this place others wanted to come wasn't able to and I'm telling you it was something about it brother Jerry the lingering we didn't stop we got here at 730 it didn't stop at 8 o'clock it didn't stop at 830 some of us were still here half past 9 o'clock I told them they could leave whenever they wanted to leave but they didn't want to leave God's presence brother Jerry said pastor's pretty smart he knew we wanted to play cornhole so he said I'll schedule a 
prayer meeting uh, right in the middle of it. Uh, and we'll come and uh, he said, but there ain't no game of cornhole. Uh, I'd rather I pray uh, than what I feel when I felt tonight. My oh, God. Friday night, I was in church Friday night, Brother Lance Torrey's installation service at Gonzales. And I'm telling you what, Pastor Copeland was preaching. And, and he, he was preaching conviction. Sister Shalen, you know who the first person, I'm not saying this bragging, you know who the first person was that hit the altar? Brother Darrell, I knocked people out of the way. I ran to the altar. You know what? I said, God, I can't let there be anything that starts revival in my life, in my family. I've got to have a hunger, God. Last night, I come back over here. It started early. Brother Sagel was here around six something. Yesterday morning praying and talking to God. Thank you for getting it started, Brother Sagely. Other people were here throughout the day. But last night at 8 o'clock, I came in here. 20 people were here. I, I watched. I wish she was here. I would tell her. I watched Thursday night. A sister Tara sat here and shook under the power of God. Hallelujah. If my wife was singing on that keyboard with no other music, we are standing on holy ground. And I know that there are angels all around. I watched Sister Tara Saturday night. Last night in that corner, I was done praying. Everybody was done praying. She wasn't through praying. She kept on praying. She kept on praying. In fact, Brother Martin even left, had time left to go get a day's burrito and eat it and come back. She was still praying when he got back. Hallelujah. Well, the burrito, he said, was good. Hallelujah. It was something about it. It was powerful. It was real. It was real. People are hungry. They're tired of dead religion. They're tired of something that won't change their life. But I refuse to put something in the window and not have anything on the shelf. I, I'm telling you right now, uh, we got home Thursday night and Sister Megan text and she said, Brother Mills, she said, what do you think about having a community prayer gathering? My words were, well, let me think let, let me think on it. Look at the calendar, I get back with you. So I text. Brother Frederick hadn't talked to him in a while, and I text him. I said, Brother Frederick, help me pray about this. I want if it's God's will, I want to do this. He texts me back and basically said, It ain't nothing to pray about. It step out on the limb and go do it. And immediately I said, Yes, sir. And I begin to do that. I'm invi I've already invited Second Baptist Church. I've invited First Baptist Church in St. Francisville. I'm invited at non denominational churches. I'm going to invite the Catholic Church, expecting the priest to get the Holy Ghost when he walks into here. I'm here to tell you right now if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, will turn from their wicked way, then we'll hear from heaven yes. hallelujah my wife sent me a text this morning of a forum that she's on with some other pastor's wife it was just this, this morning the pastor's wife said prayers appreciated today Yesterday out of the blue, a non-denominational pastor called my husband and asked if he could come with his church people to pray at our church. And they're coming today. We just want the walls to fall, a fire to fall, because there's a hunger that has come to America. I really believe, church, we are in a 9 11 moment. I've told more than one person here. At 9 11, there was no Republicans and there wasn't no Democrats. They were patriots and Americans. But over six months later, we went back to the way that we was. I'm telling you right now, we got a strike by the Irons hot. We got to get in there the grease is hot through the media and tell them, come you don't have to go to Kentucky you don't have to go to Ohio Michigan. We got it right here right here right here Hallelujah 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 My God, just lift your hands right now for the Holy Ghost Yeah, no, 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 no God's drawing people. God's drawing people who don't... 
They won't have no. See, I'm just telling you what I what I'm praying for. I hope you're praying. I'm praying. We Thursday night at this prayer gathering. I said it's gonna start at six. Go to at least eight. If you can't make it at six, make it when you can. You stay as long as you want to. It don't matter. It's no pressure. But I'm believing that this Thursday, there's so many people that repent of their sin. I'm believing this Thursday, we're going to baptize people in Jesus' name. I'm believing. I'm speaking out that I believe people are going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I believe this Thursday, people are going to receive miracles. People are going to receive healing. People don't see your deliverance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Each of us is invited to the Tristan place. We stay so busy trying to pull God into our worlds that we miss hearing him inviting us into his world. Do you remember how God described the tabernacle first the main one that he built? He said in Exodus 25 and 8, let them make me a sanctuary. God said that I may dwell among them. Within these words are volumes of pent up yearnings and love for his people. Within these words are volumes of pent up yearning and love for God for his people. I recall a story I heard about a boy named Bobby. For three days, he had skipped school. Bobby's parents only discovered this when his teacher called inquiring about his absence. The parents practiced some tough love, and they expelled Bobby from his bedroom to a small room in the attic. There, he was to think about his deception. That night, Bobby's father couldn't sleep for thinking of his son in the attic. In the middle of the night, He climbed the attic stairs and he laid down in bed beside his child. Bobby was awake. Bobby was crying. And his father put his arms around him and said, Daddy loves you, son. I so want you to grow up to be a fine young man. Then daddy began to cry. And each night of his punishment, Bobby's father avoided his comfortable bed. And he spent the night with Bobby in the attic. And that's what God does for us. He does not want to meet us in the attic of amnesia or the dungeon of discipline. But he would rather meet us in the trysting place because he prefers mercy over judgment. what I find confusing about the story that we read. Moses sets up this Christian place for anyone to meet with God. Anyone. Or should I say everyone. But when Moses went there, Sister Sally, all the people stood in the door of their own tents and they did not join him. We confuse the tabernacle and the Tristan place. We, we say folks don't see the need for abiding fellowship. We think forgiveness eliminates the ongoing need for intimacy with God. In one sense, the tabernacle purchased the Tristan place. John said that the blood of the Lamb permits us to walk in the light and have fellowship with Him. But the people did not go to the Tristan place. Why? Moses was there. He spent time with God. They may not have been able to journey to the Holy Mount, but they could have gone to the tent of meeting, yet they refused to move. It's good to worship at home. Worship is God's due and duty. But God wants more than just your obligation of praise. He wants us to go outside the camp. He wants us to break into our schedule and make an encounter with God happen. The Christian places where you and where I can make plans to be with our Heavenly Father. Have you ever been convicted in a message? You come to the altar and you ask God to help you in a particular area. If God chose to speak to us at these altars, I believe he would not be picking us to death over what seems so big to us. He would say something like this, where have you been? I've been missing you. 
I went to the Tristan place time, time again. But you wasn't there. There's something wrong. Adam, where are you, Adam? Eve, is everything okay? We had this time together in the cool of the e evening in, in, in the Tristan place. It's lonely there, Adam and Eve, without you. Those who find the Tristan place will find glory. Did you catch this when we read our text? It said that the pillar, the very one that would go with them, the very pillar of cloud and the, the pillar of fire, the, the, the cloud by day, the fire by night, it went to the tent of meeting on the outside of the camp. When Moses went and communed with God in the Tristan place, the same glory of the tabernacle spilled over into the Tristan place. Those who take the time to seek after God invite him into their lives. The glory, the strength, the direction that comes from his presence is found in the Tristan place. Preacher, I'm clumsy with this. Romance has never been my strong suit. What do I do? First know this. God loves you very, very much. Second, God will help you when you don't even know what to say. Third, start the conversation by just thinking. Four, pray the word, pray the Psalms. Five, enjoy presence. Spend time saying nothing at all. Spend it in the presence of God. My wife told me when we were talking on Thursday, she said, people make prayer so hard when it ain't hard at all. They think they got to be talking the whole time that they're supposed to be praying. And sometimes God just wants you to sit and linger for a while. She, she gave this statement that was, it really stuck out to me. She said, there are times we sit in the living room every day together. And we're liable to go an hour or two and not even say a word to each other. I mean, as far as a general conversation, she's working on things. I work, but it's the point that we're there together. <laughs> it's the point that if she wants to say something to me, I need to drop whatever I'm doing and listen, and vice versa. It's the point of communing together. And how many times has God showed up to the Tristan place and we was nowhere to be found? What is birthing this movement that is sweeping this country? It's purely this. It's a hunger. It's a hunger. Moses left the tent that day. The Bible says that Joshua stayed behind. I can imagine Moses saying, Joshua, come. It's time to go back home. No, sir, Joshua probably responded. I think I'll stay a little longer. Moses looked at the young man and understood, is it any wonder that Joshua succeeded Moses? Joshua pursued God. He was not as talented. He was not as gifted as Moses, but he had a heart for God. Oh, some may have said to him, you get a little spiritual, too spiritual for your own good, Joshua. You need to hang out with your friends. Joshua refused to settle for second best. He went to the Tristan place to be alone with God. But the Darrow of the Bible said that Joshua did not leave the tent. In the original language, this implies it didn't mean that he went there and he never left it for the rest of his life. We know better than that. He took him over Jordan, conquered Jericho. But what it meant was uh, it was a continuous event that Joshua was every day going to the Tristan place. I pray for a generation of men and women that they'll seek the Tristan place with God. I'm so thankful, hallelujah, Thursday night and Saturday night when I was here, and Monday night, those that came to corporate prayer, I'm so thankful for those that said, Brother Mills, 
I'm not going to let you be like Moses and just go <laughs> to it by yourself. But I want that same experience for myself. I pray that our generation will be known for the relationship with God. They'll find the power to live that they're finding him the power to live, to, to live a changed life. We talk about it in Pentecost for years. We don't talk about it any longer. I preached it. I've heard others preach it, but God began to really talk to me about it this week. I prayed with people getting the Holy Ghost before, and I said, on the day of Pentecost, Sister Kathy, they had to go and tarry in the upper room. And I said, we don't have to tarry anymore. And I understand the principle behind that. But do you not think that God could have not just gave it right then to them also and they not had to tarry? What is another word for tarrying? Lingering. Lingering. What was the upper room other than a trysting place? There's 120 disciples waiting on the, their heavenly lover to show up. And he didn't disappoint when he got there. We work, we do, we go, we fulfill. But do we spend time with God? When's the last time that you had a prayer meeting that you didn't pay attention to the clock? And you didn't care how long it lasted. You didn't care what you were doing next. You turned off the alerts off the cell phone. You turned it on, do not disturb. And you just said, God, I'm lost with you. Hallelujah. Jesus called his apostles that they might be with him. The Sanhedrin were amazed at Peter. They perceived that he had been with Jesus. From an uneducated fisherman to an eloquent orator, God's presence makes all the difference. The place needs not be elaborate. He only wants to, you to carve out some time to commune with him, your heart, it's his Christian place. Make room in your heart today, church for God. I, want, I, I don't normally do this. I want my wife to come to the music or sister Haley, whoever. And let's stand. Today, I'm asking you to join me, church. He said, join you in what, Pastor? God seeks a relationship with us. At our worst, he sits down at redemption's table and says, let's reason together about any sin that's in our life. Together, it must be together for God. Does it usually in an atmosphere of communion? In the Tristan place of the upper room, Jesus said with desire, I have desired to share this meal with you. Oh, the passion of God. As he took the bread and he broke it and he shared it and he took the cup and before he drank, he called it his blood and the blood washes us and it restores fellowship. I'm not going to try to have an elaborate altar call, but I just wonder if there's anybody in this place that says, I want to find the Tristan place. I want to step out. These altars are open. I wonder if there's anybody that'll step out from your seat and say, God, I want to go to the tent of meeting, God. And Lord, it just be me and you communing with each other. She begins to say something. Are you as hungry as you once used to be for God? Are you as hungry as you've always been for God? Is He number one in your life more than anything else? Do you put anything else before Him? Say something. Come to the Tristan place.
Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, God. I just want to be with you, God. I just want to feel your presence like never before. Do you ever wake up and he's the first thing on your mind? Do you ever go to bed and he's on your mind? Do you think about it throughout the day? That's what prayer without ceasing is. Is that you're always, maybe not necessarily praying, but you stand in a spirit of prayer. Take me to that place, Lord. I just want you, God. I just want you, God. I want to return to my first love, God. I want to go to that first love all over again. Go ahead. Why don't you link up with somebody right now and begin to pray? Tell them I'll go to the Tristan place with you. I'll go to that tent of meeting with you. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. To that place, Lord, to that secret place where God, I, I need, need you, God. You. I need you, God. You can make me love I need you, God. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. Go ahead, go ahead. Take me to that place. Lord. Go ahead, that's the way, Sister Toy. Go ahead. Place where I can be with you. Go ahead. You can make me like you. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. God's just, he'll, God's just looking for a hunger. If your hunger and thirst at the righteousness, you'll be filled. I'm safe. I am safe. I'm safe. La, 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 Said, I, I, I wet my couch with tears. You can make me like you. He loves you today. He loves you today. He loves you today. He loves you today. His oh. is the place where I'm Hallelujah. 
Thank you for your response to the word of the Lord, church. Oh, I feel heaven in this place. I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt this next service is going to be so powerful because of what I feel in this service, what I felt during what they were practicing. Just Robbie, you felt it. <laughs> Hallelujah. I believe God is in this place. Hallelujah. We're going to dismiss you. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Shake hands and be friends.